about this one, cyclobutyl butanoate. Two separate words, cyclobutyl butanoate. That up, good. Good. The main chain has four carbons. That's butanoate. OA means an ester. And the ester substituent is a cyclobutyl, so a four-membered ring. That's right. Two amino propanamide. All one word, two amino propanamide. Again, we want to draw the structure. That's a good start. Uh, that's another one where you didn't seem too happy with your answer, but you got the right answer. That is the right answer. So prop means three carbons. Amide means that it's an amide. Now, we have an amino substituent. And what's the location of the amino substituent? It's on the number two carbon. Well, we know this is the main chain here. One, two, three. So you're absolutely right. You put that amino substituent in the exact right place. And are there any carbon chains here? No, because they didn't tell us there were. If there were any carbon chains here, they'd have to say something like N-methyl or N-ethyl. Remember, if there's carbon chains here, they have to tell you that with an N locator. So if there had been a methyl group here, they'd have to say something like N-methyl, 2-amino propanamide. So we just have to put enough hydrogens to get this to be the normal neutral nitrogen with three bonds. So we have to pay attention to the locators here. A number indicates usually a position on the, well, it's tricky, but in this case, this number indicates a position on the main chain. And there are no end locators, which means there's no carbon chains on this nitrogen. Now remember that all of these are considered carboxylic acid derivatives. These are all considered carboxylic acid derivatives. And you can kind of see why that is, because they're all kind of similar to a carboxylic acid, except that instead of having a, an OH connected to the carbonyl, they have some other L group connected to the carbonyl. There's one other type of carboxylic acid derivative that doesn't look the same as the others. This doesn't look as similar to a carboxylic acid, but it's still considered a carboxylic acid derivative. I talked about this a bit in some of the other videos. This is called a nitrile. Okay. It's another name that we need to know. The general name for this is nitrile. Just like the general name here is amide or ester, this is a nitrile. And once again, then, we have to learn the suffix. Well, the suffix is very simple for nitriles, just like for amides. Just like the suffix for amides is amide, the suffix for nitriles 
is nitrile. So for example, this has four carbons, so we would call it butyl. Now there's no double or triple bonds except for the nitrile, which we'll name separately. So it's butan. And the suffix is nitrile. Now there's one little complication here that you might have seen me talk about in some of the other videos. Um, here we have this root am. Um, now this is actually butane nitrile, just to put in this little e over here. And the reason is because the next letter is a consonant. Um, so how do you know when to use an and when to use ain? Um, well, when the next letter is a vowel, you use an. But when the next letter is a consonant, consonant, you use ain. Well, here the next letter is an n, so we use the letter e over here. Usually the suffix starts with a vowel. Asyl, um, uh, well, not all, but uh, oil, or anhydride, or ester, or amide. So usually we leave out the E. But this is a rare suffix that starts with the consonant, so we put in the E. So this is butane nitrile. Notice that this is considered part of the carbon chain, so we have to include this one for counting. And this has got to be terminals at the number one carbon, so we don't need a locator. So let's give a name to this. Right. Pro for the three carbons. Ain, because there's no double bonds except for the triple bond. Um, e, because the suffix starts with a consonant, and then the suffix is nitrile. Propane nitrile. Good. Now we know that for two carbons, oftentimes there's a common name. What would be the root we would use here? Uh, acid. Yeah, acid. And then the suffix might be a little different. It turns out that this is aceto nitrile. They just stick the O in here for uh, to make this more pronounceable, I guess. So aceto nitrile would be the common name. thing to know out of all the stuff we've gone through are the suffixes. Okay. Do you remember what the suffix is for acyl halides? Uh, oil? Yeah. Oil halide, like oil chloride or oil bromide. That's right. And what's the suffix for anhydrides? Um, oic anhydride? Oic anhydride. Oic anhydride. Good. How about for esters? Uh, oate. Oate. Your tests are not open book, are they? No. All right, so yeah, these have to be memorized. Good. <laughs> oh, wait. How about for amides? What's the suffix? Amide. Amide. And how about for nitrides? Uh, nitrile. Nitrile. So these two are some of the easier ones down here. Oh, we just uh, we spent quite a bit of time there just going over the basics of the nomenclature, and uh, I still had to skip some of the, the more subtle points that your instructor went over. So if you have time, you might look at some of those subtleties. But these are the most important points for naming. Now we can go on to some reactions. Sure. Okay. Uh, we didn't talk at all about how to name carboxylic acids because you already reviewed that on one of the videos. Uh, by the way, do you remember what the suffix is for carboxylic acids? Uh, isn't it just is it uh, oic? Oic acid. Oic acid. Oic acid. That's right. You might have, say, butanoic acid or propanoic acid. Hmm, as well, as long as we're at it. What's the suffix for aldehydes? Um, uh, is it AL? Good, yeah, you work that out. 
I guess that comes from the name aldehyde. It just ends in A-L. And what's the suffix for ketones? Again, that comes from the name ketone. This ends in O. So that, that's quite a bit of nomenclature that you've gone over that's uh, probably going to be coming up on the next test. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.